What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports, back again with another one. King Ryan Garcia. Who will he fight next? Everybody thought he was heading down the road to fight Javante Tank Davis. Those two guys have been going back and forth on Twitter for the last week or so. Both guys was on the Mike Tyson podcast about a week ago going back and forth. Everybody thought that this matchup was going to be the fight to take place next. The biggest fight in the United States, Javante Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia. Now it looks like Ryan Garcia is having second thoughts. At least his team is having second thoughts. And they're looking to uh, go another route and not fight Javante Tank Davis. King Ryan Garcia was on Jalen Jacoby's show on ESPN. And they was talking about a matchup between him and Javante Tank Davis. And he says, I want to fight Javante Tank Davis, no doubt. I want to knock him out in the second round just like I've been stating for the last several weeks. But I got a much bigger fight that I'm working on right now. I can't reveal who it is, but I got a much bigger fight than the Javante Tank Davis fight. One of the co-hosts, I don't know if it was Jalen or Jacoby, said uh, they kind of made a name that rhymed with Manny Pacquiao. And Ryan Garcia didn't, didn't uh, deny it. He kind of uh, went around the bushes, you know, went around, went, went, out, went outside the uh, house, went uh, out the back door, went through the side door, you know, and didn't uh, come through the front door and answer the question. But he basically, uh, in a roundabout way, admitted that Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao is the guy that they're looking to fight next. So Golden Boy Promotion is in discussions with uh, Team Pacquiao. You know, his um, his manager, Sean Gibbons, who's uh, the president and CEO of MP Promotions. That's Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao's promotional company. I'm hearing those two uh, entities are in negotiations. Golden Boy Promotions and MP Promotions are in negotiations for a t potential matchup to take place in late spring or early summer. It could go anywhere between April or May all the way to the latest of uh, July of 2021 for Ryan Garcia versus Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Now, this is a shrewd move by Oscar De La Hoya. See, there's a lot, a lot of different layers to this. A lot of different layers to this. First of all, Oscar De La Hoya has no love loss with PBC and Al Heyman. He would love to stick it to Al Heyman in the PBC. You know, make it look like, yeah, we want to make the fight between Ryan Garcia and Javante Tank Davis, but they really don't because Ryan Garcia is their number one fighter now that Canelo Alvarez has left Golden Boy Promotions. And they would ha hate to lose him to PBC's top fighter in Javante Tank Davis. You know, especially uh, uh, the way those two uh, parties separated and went their separate ways a few years ago when Golden Boy Promotions and Al Heyman and Richard Schaefer broke up. And a lot of the fighters that uh, Golden Boy Promotions thought they had under their banner went with Al Heyman in the PBC. Yeah, Oscar De La Hoya still is not happy about how that played out several years ago. And he would love no more than to stick it to Al Heyman in the PBC and say, look, <laughs> you thought I was going to give you my number one guy to fight Javante Tank Davis? Nah, it ain't happening. I'm going to go over here and make a deal with Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao and get this deal done with him and, and put on a big fight in the middle part of 2021. And that's what's going on here. You got to understand that Oscar De La Hoya, his career, you look at his career, especially early on, he fought a lot of legends. He fought a lot of guys that were uh, the legends of the sport, Hall of Fame fighters when he was young. And he's kind of doing the same blueprint to Ryan Garcia. You remember early in the Oscar De La Hoya's career, he fought Hector Macho Man, Hector Macho Camacho. It's Macho time! Remember? The great Hector Macho Camacho. Rest in paradise. The Macho Man. He fought him when he was uh, late in his career, and he was a uh, upstart on the uh, one of the rising prospects in the sport of boxing. He was much more established uh, fighter than uh, Ryan Garcia was, but he was still a young fighter that had yet to uh, test his skills with the top uh, fighters uh, in the sport. So he fought a lot of veterans. He fought Hector Macho Camacho. He fought Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. two times. He was a young upstart coming up. 
you know, and uh, he's doing the same thing with Ryan Garcia. He's got the same roadmap put out for Ryan Garcia to put Ryan Garcia in there with Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. And hopefully Ryan Garcia can pull up saying if he defeats Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, and that's a big, big, big if. He will be the biggest star in the sport of boxing, especially here in the United States. Maybe not worldwide. Maybe that goes to whoever wins out of Joshua and Fury. But uh, he will definitely be the biggest boxing star in the United States and one of the biggest boxing stars in, U in the United States of America. So that's what they're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, to make, to make the matchup between Ryan Garcia and Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Ryan Garcia is a guy that uh, he stands kind of straight up. He's straight up. He's a straight up fight. He's got fast hands. And he's got um, very, um, he's a very smart fighter for a guy that as young as he is. He, he, he processes things in the ring very, very smoothly. And um, he's a guy that's going to uh, present some problems because he's got fast hands. And due to the fact that Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao hasn't fought in two years. I think me, many people are going to miss the point and say, oh, man, Pacquiao is going to knock out Ryan Garcia. That fight shouldn't go past six rounds. And that, may, that very well may be the case. But you got to understand, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao hasn't fought in two years. So Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy Promotion are taking that into account. Maybe they can catch uh, Manny Pacquiao a little bit rusty. And maybe Ryan Garcia can blitz him like he did Luke Campbell early on in that fight. He blitzed uh, Luke Campbell. He jumped on him right in the first round, and he was throwing a lot of combinations. And the speed kind of overwhelmed Luke Campbell early in that fight. So I, I think they're going to be looking to do the same thing to Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Pacquiao, you know, if they fight this fight at 140 pounds, it'll be interesting to see what the WBA do where they strip Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. And in my opinion, they should, uh, should uh, strip Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Pacquiao's best bet is to get this fight at 141 pounds. He just got to be over the uh, junior welterweight limit. Because if he fight this fight at 140 pounds, WBA may very well strip him. Now, if he fight this fight at 141 pounds, uh, I don't know what the WBA rules is. You know, you're fighting a guy that's coming up from uh, 135 pounds that's not even ranked in the top 15 of the WBA. So they still might not be able to sanction that fight. But I know good and well if he fights the fight at 140 40 pounds that he just asking the WBA to strip him fighting the, uh you fighting in a weight class below that you're the champion in then you fighting a guy that's two weight classes down that's ranked in a different organization so you asking for the WBA to strip you so it remains to be seen how that uh, situation plays out but as far as uh Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao obviously he wants 20 million minimum guarantee and the zone which has been thought with throwing them around money early on when they launched a uh, boxing uh, app that's kind of slowed down. That slowed down that money train. That money train is not flowing down that track as fluid as it did earlier when they first launched that app. They've kind of put the uh, brakes on on that money train. But they might be willing to pay Pac-Man Pacquiao $20 million in an effort to finally get the zone off the ground and get that uh, app launched to the level that they thought it was going to do when they first started it. So man, Pac-Man Pacquiao is going to want $20 million. He'll help uh, the subscribers... Uh, subscription um increase and that's what they're looking to do john skipper is i'm hearing is behind the scenes really pushing this fight to happen and working with oscar de la hoya and uh they're working with um manny pacquiao's team to try to make this fight happen because you know all you got to understand that that the early on the main fight that they want to do to help their uh the zone subscriptions increase was triple g versus canelo alvarez three in the fight has not taken place to this point. It don't look like it's, it's on the horizon. As Canelo Alvarez, as you heard earlier uh, this week, has got a matchup signed with uh, Avril Yerdeman on February 27th on the zone. And after that, he's looking to fight Billy Joe Saunders on Cinco de Mayo in May of 2021. And if he's successful with that, he's looking to fight Caleb Plant in September, Mexican Independence Day in 2021. So that would pretty much take Golovkin out of the equation for the rest of 2021. Therefore, the zone is not getting the fight that they really want to get. And one of the fights that they have been seeking to make ever since they uh, first launched their uh, boxing streaming app. And it hasn't taken place yet. It doesn't look like it's on the horizon. So this could be a big fight for them. They'll be willing to pay Manny Pacquiao his $20 million minimum guarantee to put the fight on, fighting Ryan Garcia, who's a social media superstar, has a lot of followers on social media, and they could uh, promote this fight. Ryan Garcia has a great personality. He'll talk the fight up. 
You know, he'll say he, he's going to pull up upset, you know, kind of like he said in, uh, against Javante Dank Davis. He said he's 22 years old, like a young Cassius Clay, calling out Sonny Liston, the bear, and, and shocking the world and beating Sonny Liston and becoming the world heavyweight champion. He'll be probably speaking the same things toward Manny Pacquiao, a legend, a great fighter, a dominant fighter, much older fighter, but in a similar class of a Sonny Liston who was who, who was older at that time when he fought Cassius Clay. And uh, saying he's going to pull an upset and shock the world. He'll promote the hell out that fight. He's got a strong Latino fan base here in America and in uh, the Latin countries. So he'll have a whole lot of people uh, excited about the matchup. You know Manny Pacquiao named Transcends Boxing. He's got followers everywhere. He's got a huge Latino fan base. You know he's got a huge Filipino fan base. And he has a huge American fan base. So that's a fight that makes money. But the thing about it is... This fight is is really what's wrong with boxing, you know, just to be fat of fact of. Instead of making the best fights, you know, you're making these money fights. You know, boxing has uh, reached a, a situation where they're they just trying to put stuff on TV that they think is going to make quick, easy money. And instead of building the sport, sport up like they built it up since this, since this inception, making good fighters fight good fighters. You know, making those uh, good fighters win that fight and fight other good fighters. UFC took that blueprint, and you see UFC has had a lot of success uh, in their uh, sport. And the boxing has seemed to get away from that, and that's been a major problem. You know, Javante Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia should be fighting. Tiafimo Lopez and Devin Haney should be fighting. And those winners should be fighting each other to find out who is the head dog, who is the top dog in the lightweight division. But instead, you got Ryan Garcia potentially moving up a weight class. He haven't even claimed a title at uh, lightweight, but moving up a weight class to take on a legend in Manny Pacquiao. And a fight, if he wins, will give him definitely superstar status and will him, and, uh, enlarge his brand. But it still wouldn't make, uh, but you know, enlarge his brand. And then he will, you know, you think he a diva now, he'll really be a diva if he defeats Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. You know, he will basically uh, be the A-side. He'll basically be telling uh, Teofimo Lopez and Devin Haney and Javante Tank Davis to fall at his feet, get on his get on their knees and beg him for a fight. And whatever he decides to give them, as far as the purse split goes, they would have to accept it or he could just move on. So that's 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 what this is about, man. This is just, uh, uh, it's just you know, just, just when you think you've seen... Uh, Everything in boxing, you know, something else comes out. You be like, man, what? And that's when I first heard this. I was like, what? You know, Ryan Garcia, to his credit, mentioned Manny Pacquiao when they talked about potential fights. He said his uh, three fight plan was to fight Javante Tank Davis, Manny Pacquiao, and then Devin Haney. He did say that, but he, I think, he said more like Manny Pacquiao was his dream fight. He didn't think that fight would uh, take place in the near future. He just thought he kind of threw that out as a dream fight, but he did. He did, to his credit, admit that that was part of his three-fight plan. And uh, it looked like he's uh, and his team are trying to make it happen. We'll see if the fight actually happens. Manny Pacquiao has also been linked to a matchup with Conor McGregor. But that remains to be seen. Maybe Sean Givens uh, contacted uh, Dana White, and Dana White might have told him, say, hey, uh, Conor McGregor got an exclusive contract with uh, UFC, and we let him uh, do the fight with Floyd Mayweather. You, know, you got to understand, Dana White was at those promotional uh, fights the promotional press conference. He let Conor McGregor uh, take that fight with Floyd Mayweather with his blessing. I don't know if the contract allowed for him to uh, take that fight or well, he had to get a, a blessings from Dana White to, to, to take that fight, but he was on board for that fight. But he doesn't seem to be on board for a Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao fight. And if the contract <clears throat> states that he has an exclusive uh, contract with Dana White and if he fights outside of the UFC, he has to get the UFC approval, then that could be a problem for a potential matchup with uh, <clears throat> Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. So that's why be wild. Another reason why they're looking toward uh, Ryan Garcia. Manny Pacquiao is uh, in his next fight. He wants to knock the rust off. I think he still wants to fight Errol Spence Jr., but I don't think he wants to fight him next. I think he wants to have what you call a quote-unquote tune-up, a fight to knock off the rust and uh, get his feet wet and get his rhythm back, and then he wants to take on Earl Spence Jr., who is the number one fighter in the welterweight division. So we'll see what happens, and we will see what transpires, but that's the breaking news. Ryan Garcia versus Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. That fight could be very interesting, especially in the first couple of rounds. 
Um, it's going to be danger zone for both guys. You know, uh, not danger zone as far as um, Pacquiao getting knocked out, but danger zone as far as he's he going to be a little bit rusty. Ryan Garcia seems to be a fast starter, so he might be able to jump out and kind of blitz Pacquiao early on in that fight if he's not intimidated by Pacquiao. If he's not in awe about Pacquiao, he made a comment that – when Pacquiao hits him, he's not gonna he's gonna be so in all Pacquiao. He's gonna be like, hit me again, Pacquiao. I can't believe I'm in the ring with the legendary Pacquiao. Hope he don't come in with that mindset like a fan. He gotta come in there and treat him like Larry Holmes treated Muhammad Ali when he fought him back there in uh, 1980. Muhammad Ali told Larry Holmes, I'm your idol. You know, you pattern your whole style off of me. And when you meet your idol, you ain't gonna know what to do. And Larry Holmes went in there with no respect and dominated Muhammad Ali. That's what uh, Ryan Garcia going to have to have that same mindset when he fight uh, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. But uh, if he can come out there and blitz him and, and uh, try to take advantage of uh, Manny Pac-Man rustiness, that's going to be to his uh, advantage. But he's got to uh, not make those mistakes, man. He kind of backs straight up. He kind of uh, drops his guard and leaves his chin up. He's got to really worry about that. And uh, Manny Pacquiao is going to be looking to uh, back him up. And if he, if he goes straight back, and don't move his head, man. Pacquiao's gonna catch him with that left hand, and he can he can still do that. He that's just like uh, getting on a bicycle. That's just something that he uh, been doing for so many years. Even if, even the two years in activity is not gonna be able to uh, save Ryan Garcia in that aspect. So he's going to be very very diligent in this fight. He's going to be aggressive because he's fighting a guy that he haven't fought in two years. But he's going to be careful at the same time. He's going to have to have uh, precise aggression in the ring against uh, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. But I think the longer the fight goes, I think Ryan Garcia has a better, uh, has a uh, chances increase. You know, his chances are better. I'm not saying he's going to win a fight, but I say his chances get better as the fight goes on. Because when you watch Manny Pacquiao's fight against Keith Thurman, during those middle rounds, Manny Pacquiao wasn't doing much. He was laying on the ropes, taking a lot of shots with Keith Thurman, a lot of overhand rights from Keith Thurman. Because I think he was, uh, you know, trying to save himself for the for the back half of that fight. And he kind of turned it on in the last two or three rounds and uh, really hurt uh, Keith Thurman with a body shot late in that fight and was able to pull through a split decision. But he wasn't as active as he was in his heyday. So I think the longer the fight goes, I think the better it is for Ryan Garcia because he's the younger guy, the fresher guy. And he seems like in the uh, Luke Campbell fight, he seems like he could have fought another 15 rounds. He looked real fresh when he stopped the Luke Campbell. It didn't show any kind of uh, tiredness. So uh, I think uh, as that fight goes on, he's going to, especially in the 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th round, uh, if it goes that far, I don't, I don't think it's going to go that far, but just say it goes that far, he can, he can have some, uh, he can have some uh, good things happening for him in that ring, man. I think he can uh, let his hands go overwhelm Pacquiao, get Pacquiao on the ropes, and start ch taking, taking advantage of the, uh, they need to watch the Keith Thurman fight, especially uh, the middle rounds and the latter part of the fight, and look at that, uh, round 7, 8, and 9, Look at those rounds. Keith Thurman did a lot of good work in there. He did a lot of good work backing up Pacquiao and hitting him with a lot of overhand rights. Ryan Garcia needs to look at that and uh, just be a little bit more aggressive than uh, Keith Thurman. Even though Keith Thurman was landing shots, I felt he could have been even more aggressive. I think he, he should have put his foot more on the gas. He might have still been hesitant from that earlier knockdown in that fight. He didn't want to just open himself up and be and worried about getting countered from Pacquiao. Maybe that was a problem. But Ryan Garcia can't fight like that. He's got to go for broke. You know, he's got to take advantage of that situation, knowing that Pacquiao is kind of trying to save himself for the last half of that fight where he could turn it on and may possibly hurt Ryan Garcia like he did Keith Thurman and, and uh, getting Keith and uh, Ryan Garcia might not have the um, the size of a chin to hold up and maybe he get stopped like, like unlike Keith Thurman who was able to uh, make it to the twelfth round and lose a competitive fight. So it remains to be seen how the fight plays out. It remains to be seen if the fight actually happens, but it's a intriguing matchup. It's a little bit more uh, intriguing matchup than people are giving, giving uh, credit to. That people are saying, ah, man, Pacquiao going to knock this guy in the three, inside three rounds. If this fight go play, he might knock him out in the first round. This is a mismatch. I would say that if Pacquiao was active. If Pacquiao had been fighting the last year and a half, and he's just coming off of a victory over Mike Garcia, and he fights four or five months later, you know, I would say, yeah. Pacquiao is going to dominate him. He's going to stop him early. The guy is uh, too green. But for the fact of the matter that Manny Pacquiao has been so inactive the last two years, Ryan Garcia is a, seems like to be a fast starter. He seems like he uh, get, he gets off to fast starts. He doesn't he doesn't try to figure his opponent out. He doesn't try to uh, you know uh, try to see what's going on and uh, get his body warmed up and get his lather going in the first round. He seems like he's on a uh, seek and destroy mission from the opening bell. 
I think it's a very intriguing fight, man. I think it's a very, very intriguing fight. And you got to understand, man, Pacquiao is not a natural 147-pounder. He's probably a natural 140-pounder. You got to understand that Manny Pacquiao tried this blueprint, a similar blueprint, about two years ago. Remember, he wanted to fight Vasily Lomachenko. But Lomachenko didn't want to go past 135 pounds. I think they were trying to make a catch weight around maybe 138 or uh, even up to maybe 140 junior welterweight. And uh, Vasily Lomachenko didn't want to go past 135 pounds. But Manny Pacquiao wanted to fight Vasily Lomachenko when both were with top rank. The fight didn't happen. And now Manny Pacquiao is looking to fight uh, another rising star similar to Vasily Lomachenko because Vasily Lomachenko had a big name at that time. Ryan Garcia has even a much bigger name, especially on social media, and he has a huge following, which is I know is appealing to uh, Pacquiao and his team. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. But as far as the matchup goes, a very intriguing matchup, a very exciting fight. Guys, both guys are offensive-minded, so it should be a fun battle, and it should be very, very interesting to see what happens and what transpires. Let me know your thoughts about Ryan Garcia versus Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Fight happening sometime in April and May of 2021, or as late as July of 2021 is what I'm hearing that they're looking at for this fight to take place in the United States of America. And we'll see what happens, and we will see what transpires. Hit the like button if you like the content of this video and subscribe to JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. I'll holler.